There are few celebrities more individualistically iconic as Carrie Fisher and Paul Simon, which can make the fact that they once coexisted in a relationship all the more interesting. As one can imagine, the relationship between these two revolutionary icons involved quite a bit of headbutting, but it also entailed quite a bit of love below and above the surface. Join us as we take a look at the 12-year romance between two of Hollywood's most legendary figures, Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher. Both Carrie Fisher and Paul Simon were icons that rose from one status to another almost mercurially, as if destined to achieve some kind of star status beyond their limits in their respective spheres. This iconic status only goes to make the couple's history all the more interesting, and all the more secretive with regards to Hollywood romances of the time. Let's explore all the things that made them work as a couple, as well as all the things that inevitably tore them apart. Carrie Fisher was a reluctant heroine in Hollywood cinema, and Paul Simon was a reluctant hero in the pantheon of popular music. Despite coming from disparate media backgrounds, both rose to cult status almost despite their roles in their respective mediums. This drive is perhaps what drew them together as they crossed paths, and perhaps what drove them apart. You could say the relationship between Carrie and Paul was tumultuous, but that would almost be an understatement. One could imagine the 12-year relationship between the iconic celebrities didn't go off without a hitch, but it was perhaps more plagued than one biographer could ever give credit for. Still, in this video, we're going to try to pinpoint exactly where Carrie Fisher and Paul Simon went wrong, as well as why they were so great together in the first place. They were both very poetic beings, and this often went unlooked in their increasingly large public personas. Paul often took a back seat to the general public image of his project, Simon and Garfunkel, in exchange for the increased media presence of his fellow singer, Art Garfunkel. Still, Simon was due most of the credit behind the scenes. Likewise, Carrie Fisher often went unmentioned in regard to her performances in George Lucas's revelatory Star Wars trilogy, overlooked for the series' young auteur. In the public sphere, both icons became directly associated with and inseparable from their individual arts, but neither was directly thanked for it in the way they truly wanted. Paul was often looked past when it came to cultural status in favor of art, although Paul put in a much greater amount of effort into maintaining an amount of creative control. Likewise, Fisher was often overlooked for her performance in favor of the general conceit of the Star Wars trilogy itself. Unbeknownst to many, the entire time she was filming the trilogy, as well as after, Carrie was as much a prolific activist and philosopher as she was an iconic feminine figure. Both Carrie Fisher and Paul Simon had secrets they didn't want Hollywood to know about, and they were having a hard time keeping Hollywood away from them without each other. There are many famous Hollywood romances that have gained notoriety in recent history. Still, few stand the historical significance of Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, and not only because of their respective places in Hollywood history. These two figures truly lit the public stage on fire, and their chemical reaction to each other was something that really rocked the cultural sphere. Although one could imagine the two met in the heights of Hollywood excess, they actually met a few months before Fisher was famous for her iconic performance in Star Wars. And this was a time when Simon was more popular than ever, and as a part of his touring group Simon and Garfunkel, Paul Simon was certainly no stranger to romantic company. Still, something about Fisher stood out to him from the get-go, and it was his mission to make her his longtime partner in crime. Although Fisher may not have immediately stood out to Simon on a social basis, she must have made her impression, and the two would soon meet again and again in differing roles. Each time they met, Simon would become more and more infatuated with her, and the two were soon in love. On an SNL appearance soon after the successful release of 1977's Star Wars, the two solidified their off-screen and on-screen chemistry, and became the couple the media would peg them as to this time today. The problem was, as efficient as their dualistic personalities were at creating a contrast on screen, their contrasting personalities would prove somewhat unworkable in the real world. Join us as we continue to explore what exactly happened with their relationship. And like this video and subscribe to our channel to promote more engaging content. As soon as Paul and Carrie's romance unfolded, the drama started to unfold in spite of it. As two contrasting members in an increasingly overflowing Hollywood scene, each saw themselves on the top of their respective fields, which began to put them at odds with each other. The pressures of their societal status weighed on them, and their tendencies to take illegal drugs began to fuel their paranoia in more ways than one. 
It could be said the bond between Fisher and Simon was a result of their increasing mutual codependence on various uppers and downers, but that's almost incidental to Hollywood. As one of the biggest Hollywood romances of all time, it would go on to set the stage for many that followed and mimic the fate of many that fell before. While filming 1981's The Blues Brothers, Dan Aykroyd incidentally saved a cameoing Carrie Fisher from choking. This incident notoriously resulted in the almost marrying of Aykroyd and Fisher, which was comically ended by the barely protesting Paul Simon. It all just kind of happened, with Fisher and Simon spiraling around each other over and over during that short and very long 12-year period. Carrie, with her strange Hollywood pedigree, and Simon, with his long Hollywood past, both found themselves somewhat distrusting of the idea of there being much more tabloid publicity involved in their futures. Perhaps this is the reason both continually found themselves floating back together. Their relationship was notoriously documented, but perhaps never fully understood. The media routinely tattled on their constant bonding and unbonding, but perhaps they never realized the two were growing stronger together with each passing interlude in their tumultuous relationship. Eventually, they tied the knot for real, and it was an expectedly star-studded affair. SNL producer Lorne Michaels was present, along with pop uber legend Billy Joel, and it was almost certainly an experience like something out of a dream for both Fisher and Simon. As with all dreams, though, both parties would inevitably wake up. After the marriage, Fisher and Simon would periodically separate, date, get back together, and then separate and date and so on. This went on and on, with the two constantly quarreling and remedying despite each other. Still, they'd work together, raising their respective children, regardless of whether or not the other was the biological parent. They were certainly a progressive couple, and a pair that empathized with each other beyond the average understanding of the paparazzi or the general public. This fact only makes it that much more troubling that their relationship was eventually doomed to end, for better or for worse. After time and time again of drifting apart and coming back, the coiling was eventually put to a standstill by a vision Carrie Fisher had on a quest with a spiritual guide in Brazil. Accompanying Simon during a recording session, Fisher tried to pass the time by taking some psychedelic tea. Fisher saw her relationship with Paul wasn't something she should consider mutually beneficial and decided to end it. It becomes all too obvious when looking back at the relationship between Carrie Fisher and Paul Simon that they were together for reasons that didn't necessarily jive well with the notion of a true romance. It could have been just for publicity, or it could have just been good timing, but it certainly wasn't the kind of relationship we dream about when we think of a Hollywood romance. The legacy of Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher is certainly a very interesting part of Hollywood history. It was one early instance in which both public relations and press became a defining factor in a lot of the average American's perception. It's easy to look at them as two people who just loved being independent too much to coexist. These are certainly two contrasting visionaries who each aimed to control their general sphere, and it was inevitably just too hard for them to cohabit or coexist. If you see any parallels between this momentous Hollywood romance and any others before or after, let us know in the comments. And if you have more insights regarding Fisher and Simon, feel free to have us take a look. And as always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Press the notification bell to ensure you'll always be notified when a new video drops.